Good morning, everyone. We're just going to give um, the attendees a few moments to log in so that they can view the whole presentation. Thank you. Thank you speakers for all being here. We'll just give them a few more minutes and we can get started. Jeannie, I think you're muted. Thank you. Good morning and thank you for joining us. Welcome to BBB Showcase for Consumers. My name is Jeannie Rucker and I'm the Business Engagement Specialist at the Better Business Bureau serving Central Ohio. Before we get started, this is being recorded. If your team members were not able to attend, we will have the recording available. If you have any specific questions, you can call 614-466-4433 or email claims at com.ohio.gov. Here at BBB, we're your partner in protection and advancing your trust in businesses. Whether you're shopping, hiring a contractor, or engaging in other services, be sure to look for the sign. The sign of a better business to ensure you are working with an ethical and trusted company in your neighborhood. Check out local companies at BUB.org. Also, we've launched a new scam tracker. This is where you can go to search for current scams you might be encountering. And if you've encountered a scam, this is a place to report it to help protect everyone. Find it at BUB.org backslash scam tracker. This month is Unclaimed Funds Month. 
and we have representatives from the Ohio Department of Commerce's Division of Unclean Funds to help you find lost funds due to you. Today with us, we have Marlene Chooks. As the Deputy Superintendent for the Division of Unclean Funds, Marlene plans, directs, and coordinates activities in the division. She assists in defining the goals and objectives of the division. Marlene is responsible for developing policies and procedures for the division and advising the superintendent on issues related to the operations to ensure that the mission, goals, and objectives are met. Anitra Davis. Anitra is a claims examiner supervisor who provides herself on being positive, professional, and helpful to all she encounters. Her position is to ensure the examination process is conducted efficiently and communication with the claimants is clear and concise. She has over 20 years of experience in government affairs and business management. She has a BS in public administration and business management from Indiana University. And Susie Wagner. Susie is the Outreach Administrator for Division of Unclean Funds. It's her job to ensure that Ohioans know about unclean funds and claim their money. Since joining the division in 2022, she has created and implemented several outreach programs, events, and advertising. Susie has 20 years of experience in marketing, as well as MS in marketing from Franklin University. Thank you to the Ohio Department of Commerce team for presenting today. I'm going to turn it over to Susie. Thank you, Jeannie and the Better Business Bureau. We so appreciate this opportunity to be here today. And as Jeannie mentioned, we do have all of our contact information on this slide and it will be on the last slide if you didn't catch it right now. So let's get started. Today, we're going to talk about what are unclaimed funds, whoops, um, and one second. <laughs> What are unclaimed funds? How to find out if you have any steps to claiming those funds. We're going to talk about timeline and delays, uh, how to find out your claim status, and lots of resources that we have for you. Why is there a division of unclaimed funds? Because of law. The Ohio Revised Code was passed in 1968, and that is why we are here to return the, the funds to the rightful owner. What are unclaimed funds? This is why we're here today. It's lost and forgotten money from inactive accounts that is reported by banks and businesses to the state of Ohio, the Division of Unclaimed Funds for Safekeeping. It's as simple as that. Where does this money come from? Inactive checking accounts, savings accounts, refund and credit balances, uncashed cashier's checks, life insurance benefits, stocks and bonds, and also safe deposit box contents. So businesses report unclaimed funds to us every year per the Ohio Revised Code 169, whether they have unclaimed funds or none to report. They are due every year, November 1st, unless you're a life insurance company in which it's due on May 1st. So now everything you need to know about finding and claiming your funds. Have you ever had an inactive account that uncashed cashier's checks, stocks and bonds? And, or maybe you don't even know if you do have that money. We are going to tell you exactly what to do. Everything that we are talking about today, again, is on unclaimedfunds.ohio.gov, our website. So it's just three easy steps to claim your funds. Step number one, you search your name for unclaimed funds. Step number two, there's a checklist of documentation. So proactively, you can find out what you will need to provide us so that we can verify that you are the rightful owner. And step three, send the information to us. Send us your claim form and your supporting documents. It's that easy. Can I look up money for a family member? We get this question all the time. Yes, you can look up money for anyone, a family member, a neighbor, a friend, a deceased loved one. Yes, you can type in anyone's name to search. And what we have found is that many people over 50 years of age have claims. And then also there are many deceased individuals 
that have left money that's unclaimed. And so we are looking for those rightful owners, the heirs, the beneficiaries of those trusts, executors of estates. So if this rings a bell, if you know anyone, have them look up the name. The process to claim the funds, whether they are for you or someone else who has passed, is the same. So step number one, searching for your unclaimed funds. You will go from our website to missingmoney.com, which is an authorized state-sponsored website. You type in your name, literally, into the last name and first name fields. Do a search. Also make sure that you put Ohio in the state. And then all the claims with someone with your name comes up. And what you're doing is you're looking to see if any of the addresses that are listed for these potential claims are places that you have lived or have been associated with. If, if there are any, then that could be a claim for you. So hit the claim button, follow the prompts to the next step. And when you are finished with missing money, it will give you a claim number and a claim form will be emailed to you momentarily. So write down your claim number, you'll need that later. And now we will go to Anitra, who is gonna go over claim types. Hello, thank you, Susie. Now that you know that you have funds here at Unclaimed Funds, um, you want to know what type of claim you have. And this is important and very helpful because it tells us what type of documentation you'll need to process your claim. So let's talk about claim types. The majority of our claims are owner or individual. That means that the business that has reported the funds to us has reported that there is one person that is the rightful heir to these claims. They are the rightful owner. Then we have joint owner claims. And this simply means that we have multiple people more than one who have rightful ownership to this, this, these funds. Joint owners can be brother and sister, they can be uh, mother and father, they can be parent and child, the list goes on. But it, joint owner simply means that there are multiple people that have ownership to the funds. We also have air claims. Air claims are simply uh, funds that have been reported to us that belong to someone who is now deceased. With the air claim, there, um, there are some a different little process because you have to determine who is the rightful heir, but we can get through it. On the next slide, I'm gonna show you how to do that. We also have trust claims. Trust claims are ironclad, I say, because they have provisions that require us to only pay trust in the name of a trust. If the business has reported uh, something in a trust name, it can only be paid to a trust. We also have business claims. Business claims are simple. They have been reported to us in the name of a business and the business would have an EIN number. And the EIN number is simply a social security number for a business. So uh, the business has re been reported to us and so those claim types have been reported in the business name. Next slide, please. So now that you know and you understand the type of claim you have, on our website, this is a perfect example here. This slide shows on our website, the, the tab across, it tells you the type of claim that you have. You simply click on, click on the type of cl claim you have and it will provide you with a list of documentation that you will need to process that claim. As you see here, here is owner claim and it tells us some information that you'll need. Of course, the claim form, uh, proof of address and a couple of other things. So simply go to the website, click on the type of claim you have and you'll pro be provided a list of information. Next slide, please. In general, um, when we think of what we will always need when you file a claim. This is for anyone across the board. We will always need personal identification. And when we think of personal identification, we want something that is unexpired. An unexpired driver's license is acceptable, meaning that 
it is valid because it is unexpired. We will also accept a state photo ID, a passport, or a U.S. Department of Defense ID. We also will need proof of address. Proof of address meaning that whatever the business has reported to unclaimed funds, they reported an address, you will have to prove that you are associated with that reported address, meaning you could use a utility bill, a bank statement, paychecks, property tax statements. You want to make sure that you prove to us that you are affiliated, you are the right owner of this property, this, I'm sorry, these funds, the right owner of the funds that are here by providing us proof of an address. We also need proof of a social security number. That can be a social security card, a W-2 or a 1099. Um, but we have to have those items as well as a W-9 tax form. That W-9 tax form is on our website and can be downloaded for you to fill out. Next slide, please. And when we talk about different claim types, when we talk about deceased owner claims, meaning that someone has passed away and then there are rightful heirs, the biggest difference in our deceased owner claims are dollar value. If you have a, a dollar value or funds that are less than $3,000, you can provide information such as a death certificate, a marriage certificate, birth certificate, um, well, let's go back to the death certificate. The death certificate needs to have a social security number. A lot of times, if for some reason it is not listed there, it is considered redacted. That is unacceptable. We must have a death certificate that has a social security number. Redaction means that they have just removed it from the death certificate. So we have to have a valid death certificate with a social security number. And marriage certificate, of course, if you're the spouse, this is a way to prove that you are the rightful heir of this deceased owner. Um, birth certificates can be used as well, just in case um, you are a child claiming for a deceased parent. You will prove to us that you are this person's child by a birth certificate. A table of airship form is something that we utilize internally to determine if you need to go to probate court. Um, probate court is normally done for any dollar values over the amount of $3,000. However, it can be used under $3,000, just depending. So a table of airship form is something that we utilize. You give us some additional information about your family history, and then we determine based on that whether you actually need to have a court determine who is the rightful heir. Uh, probate documents, if they are required, they have to be within the last two years to be valid. They have to be, they can't, even if you have opened an estate or had a probate 10 years ago, those would not, those documents wouldn't be valid for us right now. We would have to have something more current within the last two years. And then to talk about the dollar value again, anything, anything over $3,000 is required to go to probate court. We, we cannot be a determiner of who the rightful heir is for dollar values over $3,000. So you will need the same documentation as under $3,000. The only difference is the court documents are required in these instances, as well as when you open an estate, you will need to have an EIN number for us. And we can help you through it. Our website is very simple. It flows very well. And it explains here, like on this slide, exactly what you need. A death certificate, probate court documents, and an EIN tax ID number. Thank you. We'll go to the next slide. And last but not least, the third step to this is how do you provide us the information that we require? you can upload the information. We have a wonderful claim form and document upload site. It is simple, it is convenient. On our website, you can take your documentation and you can upload it onto your file and we can get it processed for you as quickly as possible. And if you prefer not to use our website, you can always mail it in. We'll still take the mail. The mail is still going. We, we love the mail, right? So you can mail it in and our address here is also listed on our website. Just be sure 
the biggest thing that people forget sometimes is to sign the claim form. You, the, sign cl the claim form must be signed. And then if the dollar in value is over $1,000, it has to be notarized. So please be sure that you are looking at your claim form, being sure that it is signed and determining if it is over the $1,000 and if it needs to be notarized. Thank you. And I will hand this off to Marlene. All right. Am I still muted? I'm sorry. All right. What do you need to get started? As Anitra stated, um, we need a signed claim form with an unexpired ID, a signed W-9, and any documentation that you can submit that validates that you lived at the address that the business reported or you had some type of relationship with this business that the, that was reported on your claim form. We have a lot of claims because we are holding about $3.9 billion. So we have a lot of claims in our office. So the timeline to process the claim is sort of lengthy. We've had a lot of outreach uh, going on. So, um, but it could take up to 120 days uh, to review your claim. So please be patient with us. Um, claims are processed in the order that they are received. Um, we are working diligently to get your claim processed as soon as possible. Next slide, please. So once we received your documentation and you've used the uh, claim you uploaded it or you've mailed it in, there's always ways that you can check the status of your claim. Yes, it is a lengthy process sometimes just because we have a, a huge volume of claim. But if you put in your claim number um, in the our, on our website, you will see certain statuses. So you put in the claim number, you'll it'll tell you whether the claim has been received, whether it's under review, it's still being processed. Um, a claim is no longer being processed, or if we require additional information, that meaning that a letter has been mailed or emailed to you, um, ha have we received your documentation, or the best one yet is what you're looking for, your claim is approved and pending payment. So, and after, even if it's approved and pending payment, there's another status that's also saying, hey, it's, it's uh, approved and your payment has been issued. So probably when you see that, you could expect to check in the next seven to 10 days. Next slide, please. So what are the things that cause the delay in the claims process? As Anitra stated, the most, the, the things that cause the greatest delay is someone forgot to sign the claim form, especially when you're using a document upload site. So you, you print it out, you got the email, print that claim form out, sign it, Upload it, make sure you sign it. Notarize the claim form. If it's a $1,000 or more, please have the claim form notarized. That um, we will have to send you another letter or an email to say, hey, we need this assigned W-9. Um, you can get those forms from our website. Um, the other process is they have sent a uh, the examiner has sent you a letter or an email uh, requesting additional information. I know sometimes, especially if it comes through the snail mail, there's a document you probably never understand. Uh, Department of Commerce, it's kind of a weird looking letter. You may not open it, but they're requesting additional information, more proof um, that you are the actual owner of the funds that were reported to us. Uh, most importantly, um, please fill out the top half of the form. All the information up there should be filled out, checked in. The middle section of the form um, is basically what the business reported to us. It's telling us your name, it's telling us the address that you resided at at the time the funds were reported to us, what the business was. Sometimes they give you amount, sometimes they give us the actual um, last activity on the claim form. Um, so those are the things that we, um, in that section, sometimes people tend to want to fill that out or change it, but, um, yes, please sign, notarize your claim form. 
So we, I know a lot of people are hesitant to provide us with your social security number. Um, we need that for several reasons. Uh, one, we do pay interest on the funds that we're holding. And so if we, you earn more than $10 of interest on those funds, um, we have to report that on as a 1099 to the IRS. The other reason is a lot of times the business will give us your social security number, which is greater proof that you are the original owner of the fund. So please send us a copy of your social security card, um, a W-2, a 1099, any third party document that validates uh, your social security number is, is necessary. Next slide, please. So be sure, write this down, or I'm sure you'll have access to this slide, unclaimedfunds.ohio.gov is our website. Um, please check our site, missingmoney.com. Please check this site. Probably I would check it once a month. We get new claims in every day. New properties are reported to us uh, on a daily basis. We have one big reporting time in November and May, but we're constantly getting funds reported to us throughout the year. So thank you for joining us. Also, um, we have resources for you in case you forget. Um, on our website, we have um, instruction sheets that give you more detail on the documents that you might need. We have a great claim FAQ that will answer some of the questions like, what, how long should I wait? Do I, can I claim for my deceased uh, relative? So though, in case you forget, you can always go to our website, um, go to missingmoneyagain.com to look for your funds. Next slide. So again, our website is unclaimedfunds.ohio.gov. You can call us at 614-466-4433. Um, or email us at claims at com.ohio.gov. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Marlene, Anitra, and Susie from the High Department of Commerce team for presenting today. Thank you for your time attending this presentation today. If you have any questions, you can call again, 614. 466-4433 or email claims at com.ohio.gov. Again, thank you for your time and have a wonderful day. Oh, it's my camera. I'm going to go to my camera.